October was a pretty good reading month. I read one, two, three, four, five, six books during, well, I read four books, and I DNF two books, but we'll get into that. During the month of October, one of them was a book club book, and the rest were at my own discretion. So let's get into it, I guess. First things first, I read Mother Thing by Ainsley Hogarth. This was one of the Sunny's book club picks for the month of October. I just uploaded the book club live zoom if you want to watch that if you recently completed that book and you want to be in conversation with other people and hear what we thought about it but i feel like i've talked a lot about this book already so i will try to keep it brief in mother thing we follow a husband and wife and their dead mother the husband and wife duo move in with their mother-in-law because she's going through a major bout of depression, she ends up committing suicide, and this results in a ghost story. This was like probably one of the only, oh my god, my hair is driving me insane. <laughs> Retweet if you're growing out a bob and the yellow lighting. Like, is there any, is that better lighting? I think it is. Okay, I think it's the same. <laughs> um, okay, great. I'm gonna stop thinking about my face. I think this is one of the first and only horror books, true horror books that I've ever really read. Um, but I feel pretty conflicted about this. I wouldn't say I enjoyed my reading experience of this book, but I did enjoy preparing for the book club about it and I did enjoy talking about it with other people. It's one of those books where the underlying themes and messaging, I guess, resonated with me more in conversation versus in my actual reading of experience of it alone. And sometimes that happens, which I think makes for a good book club book. So I'm glad I got to read this for other people. This deals with grief and consumption and this idea of control and domesticity and keeping up appearances and trying to perfect yourself and become an idealized version of a wife, a mother, a sister, a friend, whatever that thing is for you in order to receive love. The main character is snarky and weird and we kind of follow her descent into madness. I think you should read this book if you like, I haven't read this book but I'm gonna recommend it anyway, Night Bitch, um, even people in the book club said it reminded them a lot of that and any of the other kind of deranged women on the, on the edge books in contemporary literature which i do think is different from a dwm but we'll get into that maybe a different time <laughs> weird weird little book read it if you want to read it after that i read a few of the essays from the word pretty by elisa gabbert which is a collection of essays it's kind of observational very quick quippy writing and i wasn't in the mood for that so i put it down it happens to the best of us doesn't it I know my friend Nathan liked this book okay and that's where I heard about it from his channel. I think he also just had like a so-so experience with it but I think Alicia Gabbard is a writer and um there's some literary criticism in this book perhaps so if that tickles you at all maybe pick it up. If it doesn't skip it. Air of the Wall by Marlon Haushofer. This book is kind of having a moment. Um, a lot of my bookish friends have read it recently. It just got recently republished by New Directions. So this is kind of the quintessential survivalist novel, but from a feminist perspective. I enjoyed reading this book. Um, we follow our main narrator who basically gets trapped at a hunting lodge and this invisible wall force field gets built around the property and it seems like everybody else in the world has died because she can see kind of people frozen in place and frozen in time and she's not able to escape her surroundings. We kind of watch her self-sufficiency be flexed like a muscle. She gains all sorts of interesting survivalist skills like animal, animal caretaking, uh, foraging, growing food, repairing her property, mending clothes, just really really in the minutia of our narrator's brain and the daily occurrences that make up their lives. This book at times felt like work to get through but 
obviously incredibly intentional. It's it's a daily log that this book is told in and we are right along with the narrator every step of the way from foraging for berries, from harvesting potatoes, from um, trying to think about canning and food survival for future seasons. Another part of the book that I felt was really interesting was her relationship with animals and kind of the resonance of the relationships that she built with the animals that were left in her care. And she has a dog, a couple of cats, a cow that she loves, and we kind of see the relationships ebb and flow over time um, between her and all of these farm animals. Yeah, I think it was interesting, kind of like sci-fi dystopian feminist bent, interesting dialogue about how our narrator isn't being perceived by an anyone anymore and what that means for her. She kind of morphs into this genderless, nameless being who's just alone working on the land. I enjoyed this book and I think it was a good time. Then I read Night Shift, which is maybe the worst book I've ever read. I also DNF'd that. I recently talked about this in a vlog I just posted. It had terrible writing, terrible character development, no one was likable, not even an unlikable fun way. I don't need to know how this book ends and I regret buying it. Okay, and then I read The Seas by Samantha Hunt, a big, big highlight of the year. Really, one of my favorite books of the year for sure. In this book, we follow a unnamed narrator who is living in like a northeastern coastal town that has a really insular community full of alcoholics and wayward youth and a lot of desperate poverty and kind of working class culture that is tied to fishing. This is definitely a book with a magical realist stint which I think can get really corny and I think people could read this book and think it was corny but I loved it and thought it was like really touching and good. Um, our main character views herself as a mermaid um, and is kind of always negotiating her identity which she feels is true to herself with people around her and trying to express what that means to the people that are closest in her life. Her closest relationship is with an older man who is in, he's not older, he's like 10 years her senior, who is an Iraq war veteran who has come home, who has severe PTSD and is really hesitant to start a romantic relationship with her because he's known her since she was a child. So we kind of see that anguish, that longing, that complete full body like takeover of what young, young love and lust can do for someone. I loved being in this world. I loved the relationship she has with her family, her grandpa and her mom. I thought the writing was stunning. I thought the plot escalated in a really fun and interesting way that I wasn't anticipating and I highly recommend this book if you are human, if you're a person. I think most people would like this book. It's very beautiful and lyrical and touched on sexuality and depression and mental illness and uh kind of like a despondent place in a way that I felt was really incredible. I loved it. And then lastly, Lastly, um, I read Never Let Me Go. <laughs> I am not trying to be a contrarian when I say this, you guys, but I did not love this book. Um, we follow a group of students, a trio, who are at a idyllic boarding school in the English countryside and it is being told to the reader as a story. So our main narrator, Kathy, is kind of recounting her days and trying to retell the story of like where she ended up and how. The plot advances, things get revealed, we're living in a dystopian world. I feel like everyone has read this book so I'm gonna spoil it right now but um, the twist is that humans are being bred to harvest their vital organs and the people that we're following are a part of that group. So they are raised knowing that their time is very limited and that affects their relationships and the way they move through the world and their outcomes in various ways. If I had to pinpoint what I didn't like about this book, I think I, I know if you're one like the Booker and the Pulitzer like multiple times, but this writing 
style was not for me. I really hate when stories are like told are told to the reader. I don't know what that's called as a literary device, but I find it like really irksome. My phone died. I mean, my freaking camera died. I was talking about Remains of the No, freaking Never Let Me Go. I don't think there was a lot of beautiful metaphorical writing. It's very straight to the point, which I think can work for me sometimes, but it didn't here. And the resolution of like these characters finding these things out about themselves and even having like an escalation point where they're able to confront some of the people who are in charge and then like absolutely nothing happens. Which I think is a commentary on like their lack of agency and you know they haven't been cultured in a way to think of themselves as fully realized people so why would they stand up for themselves or like try to get away from the inevitable? I don't know. It didn't work for me. I don't think I'm gonna be reading Ishiguru again. He just is not an author that works for me and that's okay. Those are the books I've read. I just picked up The Rabbit Hutch last night, which my friend Jalen was like, I don't think you're gonna like it, but joke's on him. I am liking it so far. Oh, that's my reading right now. I'm also going to pick up How to Read Now, which is the Sunny's Book Club pick of the month, which is fabulous. Should I give some cultural recommendations, perhaps? Um, We watched Barbarian last night. I really liked it. It's a horror movie. It's streaming on HBO right now. It was just fun and kept tricking and shifting audience expectations, which I think is really fun, especially in a horror movie context. It was like pretty grotesque and had some, some good jump scare moments, so I really liked watching that. I recently baked a pie that I thought was fabulous. It's a salted honey pie, which has a very similar custard feeling filling to as a chess pie if you're from the south chess pie is my favorite pie also currently watching the sopranos with kiki right now he's never watched it we're fucking loving it it's so fun to watch it for the first time in like 15 years i watched that show when i was way too young and i'm constantly singing woke up this morning got some gabagoo and that has completely infiltrated my brain. I am really liking a hair care product. You won't be able to tell because my hair is very windswept as riding in cars with the windows down multiple times today, but it's the Jonathan Van Ness Air Dry Cream. It's fabulous if you're really lazy with your hair and you have like any sort of texture. Um, I feel like it just makes it hold better throughout the day and sustain a little wave a little bit better than just letting it air dry all the way. Tomorrow's Halloween. It'll be Halloween when I post this and I hope you are dressing up and it's going to be fun. I'm going to be a shrimp so I'm going to post some photos of that and I have to go work on my costume. But yeah, that was my October. I hope everyone's doing well. Lots of house projects over here. Me and Kiki Sam. Eighth Eighth anniversary is tomorrow, which is pretty cool. I wonder what we're doing. I think he has plans. And yes, November already. Time is a thief. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.